In this video, we're going to start looking at how we create balanced equations and then have a little understanding about what stoichiometry is all about. The reaction that we're going to look at is the reaction of nickel chloride, which comes as the hexahydrate, with ethylene diamine, which is this guy here, and then uh, it reacts with something else. Uh, to give us some product. First of all, let's look at uh, how the ethylene diamine might react with a nickel. Uh, it's useful to think about ammonia first of all. Ammonia is NH3. And if you recall the Lewis dot structure for nitrogen in the periodic table, we have five electrons around the nitrogen in the valence shell which allows our three hydrogens, which all have one electron each, to then form two electron bonds, like this, leaving a pair of electrons ready to bond with the nickel atom. In that same way, we have a nitrogen here and a nitrogen here, both having a lone pair of electrons which can bond to the nickel. And in this case, it's going to bond to the same nickel. So we have what we call a chelating ligand. That is where we have two nitrogens in the same molecule that is that are able to bond to the nickel. And remember, we still have two hydrogens on each of those nitrogens. In fact, which will be uh, something that will become apparent in a later session, we have room to put two more of these ethylene diamines around the nickel to form a molecule that looks like that. Now you recall that we started off with two chlorides uh, associated with a nickel, so we need those two chlorides to still be around. Now, in the second part of the reaction, or maybe simultaneously, we don't know anything about the mechanism just yet, we're going to replace these chlorides with the PF6. And so we're going to react this with Na plus PF6 minus. And the sodium will go off with the chloride to add sodium chloride to our product and leave us with PF6 instead of that chloride. And of course we've got another chloride to do that, so we need to bring in another sodium and a PF6 minus. So that can go off there and go there. And we have two PF6 minuses. Now, uh, when we look at balancing an equation, the first thing we want to look at is whether or find out whether there's a, a redox going on that is a reduction and an oxidation you can't get one without the other uh, and more often than not with uh, inorganic reactions it's the metal that's involved in either the reduction or the oxidation process so let's check out the oxidation state of the metal on both sides of the equation first of all the nickel on the left hand side here is going to be nickel 2 plus because there's two chlorides associated with it. As over here we have two 1 minuses so we have 2 plus inside the square brackets which is the nickel over here. And so we've got nickel 2 plus on the left hand side and on the right hand side and so uh, we have no redox taking place makes things a little easier. Now, let's look at the uh, ratio of reagents. Recall that the ethylene diamine, we can get three moles or three molecules of ethylene diamine around every one molecule of nickel. So if we have one molecule of nickel there, we need three molecules of ethylene diamine. Normally we don't write in the one that's understood, 
but for the purposes of our explanation today we'll be putting the ones in but normally you wouldn't write them now we have uh, three molecules of ethylene diamine wrapped around our one nickel we've already switched out the chlorides for the sodium pf6 but remember there were two chlorides so we need needed two sodium pf6 and we put that two also over on the sodium chloride on the right hand side because we've generated one and two sodium chlorides along the way the next thing we need to check is to make sure that we've got everything else in the molecule this is represented by the um, uh, molecule that I wrote in a linear form on the right hand side of the equation everything is there except for we need to add six molecules of water as well uh, and then everything that's on the left hand side should also appear on the right hand side perhaps in a slightly different form that way we know we have everything balanced all the atoms must add up to be numerically equal so this balancing of the equation has given us the stoichiometric ratio that means that we now know that we need three molecules of ethylene diamine for every one molecule of nickel chloride if we have four molecules of ethylene diamine we still wouldn't get any more product because the nickel chloride would run out and we'd have excess ethylene diamine left over and so the stoichiometric reaction represents the optimized ratio of reagents on a simple understanding of how we think the reaction is taking place as we see it when it's written down in this form. There might be other practical considerations why that ratio is, is larger or smaller, but just from the mathematical standpoint, the one to three ratio is what makes sense. You can do the same thing with the two moles of sodium PF6. If we had three moles of sodium PF6, wouldn't be any advantage. Uh, we'd have some left over because there will be no more chloride for that sodium to take out. So this is leading us on to uh, considering limiting reagent, as in nickel chloride, number of equivalents, as in our reagents and products table, and then working out percentage yields, which will appear in another session. <laughs>